today we are going to study the HACCP system which is the basis for any food safety system in a food business. The food business in India is comprises of the street foods, the household practices, the uh, functions, the food uh, prepared during the functions and also the food manufacturers which are making, uh, which are producing and distributing and retailing their foods. The HACCP stands for Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point. That means we have to do an analysis of the hazards. We have to identify the critical points where we can have the failures and try to establish a system to mitigate these failures so that we can have a food which is safe. In order to understand this HACCP system, we need to know the why this food safety is such an important aspect. In order to understand this food safety, we need to understand that from where this food safety concept has originated and why this has grown suddenly so important. Food safety has always been a topic of interest to everybody because for we all have the rights to consume this safe food. In the, uh, recently in the Millennium Development Goal, food security is one of the area which has been identified as an important aspect which every nation has to comply with. In order to comply to the food security, the availability of the safe food becomes an important requirement. Now this type of awareness which has come into the world and gradually which has percolated down even to the developing countries and to the India. We have so much of external pressure due to globalization that we need to work towards the food safety. The consumers are aware, they demand for a safe product. There is a limitation of the quality inspections. If we consider the food safety in the old time, we used to consider that the last step, the product is being tested at the last step and if it meets the requirement, that means it means meets the food safety also. But that has several limitations because you cannot test each and every commodity. There are complex food processes, the lifestyle of the people are changing, the food additives are being added, there are new hazards which are coming up, new microbiological safety is, uh, issues are there, there are uh, several food safety incidents which has come into the picture in the recent past. So these incidents, these complex processes and again this has resulted in the changes of the legal regulations of the national governments importing countries and overall the scenario in the global perspective is changing towards food safety. This is a uh, overall brief about the external pressure which can come from various sources. The external pressure which is coming from the requirements of the authority which is the prime because you have to follow the law of the land. There is an increased focus from the media and public because public has become more aware, media is available and one news is being flashed from morning to the evening. There is a danger to the public safety and there are reported cases of illness, deaths and you know mass issues which come into picture. For example, the case of the malamine contamination in China in the milk products has ma made people aware about these uh, situations and has made them very sensitive towards the milk consumptions. There are customers require more environmental friendly as well as the safe product because this is another area of concern. There is internationalization. The world has become an open market. What we get and what we is sold in the developed countries is expected to be at the same level in the developing countries. People have the money to pay to the good quality and safe products. The earlier the focus was more on the adulteration. Even our national regulation was focused on the adulteration. Because India was more of a food deficit country, but over and uh, the years, uh, the, it has become due to green revolution, a more self-sufficient country in terms of the availability of the foods. So the concern has grown, the economic conditions has grown and now the concern is the safety of the food product. 
food safety in all parts of the food chain is desirable. That means when we talk from the farmer to the ones to the to your table to your plate, the food should meet the food safety requirements. It is not that only the responsibility of the person who is processing the food. So this all things leads to an external pressure on towards the food safety. There are there can be several reasons for failures in the food safety which leads to the reasons for food safety incidents. There can be failure at the stage of the raw material in their suppliers. There can be failure because of the non-appropriate handling of the product. The product is being mishandled at the uh, raw material stage, at the finished product stage or even at the in between the processing stage even at the storage stage. So you can imagine the, if the cold chain stays abuses in the cold chain or their temperature abuses, this will lead to the spoilage of the project uh, product. Sometimes there are uh, the processing itself results in the food safety incidents. For example, in case there is an additive which is being added um, uh, above the prescribed level, it may lead to the uh, problems. For example, if in the processing we do not use the correct combination of time and temperature, it may lead to a problem. There are changes in the ingredients. Sometimes we forget and uh, we do not follow the right ingredients that may result in the food safety incidents. There can be contamination at any stage in the food chain. There are non-appropriate maintenance. There are incidents where we can find the iron failings, we can find the screws and other hazardous uh, things which are, which are coming as a result of the non-appropriate maintenance. There can be food safety incidents because of the inappropriate distribution and storage. Because storage is another important aspect because once the food is prepared, and it has to go to the retail and to the consumer. There will be no more further changes, no more further uh, uh, processing on it which can reduce the hazards or reduce the microorganisms. There are certain limitations of the quality inspections. This is also a very important aspect which we need to understand. There traditionally the food control methods were based on the end product inspection and testing. That means the entire process was completed and at the end we pick up the samples on the random basis and subject it to the inspection and testing. Uh, generally the st uh, steps were microbiological testings or other chemical analysis. Now what will happen? The problem is de detected once the problem has already occurred. This approach is end product testing is a reactive approach. That means once the problem has occurred, you are taking a medicine to control that problem. But now we have to convert this approach into a more proactive approach which we call as a preventive approach. So with this approach, the safety has needs to be well planned. That means you need to assure safety at each stages from the farm, from the receipt of the raw material to the uh, manufacturing to the storage and to the distribution of these raw materials. Now let us understand what is this food safety management system. So in the previous part you understand why this food safety concept, why this proactive approach has is of so much of importance. Now let us understand what is this overall food safety management system which help us to deliver a food which will not cause any harm to the consumers. The food safety management system is based on few very important things which we call as three important pillars of a food safety management system. The first one being the prerequisites that is the GMP and GHP which we call as good manufacturing practices and good hygiene practices. We call it prerequisites another name as best practices. It can be a good veterinary practices because if you are dealing with the animal products, it can be called as a good documentation practice. So there are a series of good practices which found the found, you know, if you consider food safety management system as your own house, then that means your prerequisite programs becomes the uh, foundation of those houses. So you can imagine if you want a very safe house, how good, how well built, how well understood your foundations should be. Similarly, for a food safety management system, you need to have a sound foundations of your prerequisite programs. 
over and above this uh, foundation we can stand we can develop a good HACCP system the hazard analysis control point system and then there needs to be certain management system requirements to make it a management system management driven system now what is this management requirements these concerns with the business objectives the goals of the top management their systems to review their systems to maintain and provide resources so in a simple term it is a combination of prerequisite programs HACCP system and management system requirements. So today in this sessions we are going to cover the prerequisite programs in detail. Now uh, the HACCP system it started its origin from the NASA. NASA people were developing the food for their astronauts in the year 1959 when they were to send these uh, astronauts to the moon to the journey to the moon. Now they went to the Pillsbury and they wanted to understand that how they can develop a food uh, which is so safe that when they, they send it in the spaceship there is no problem with the astronauts when they consume it. Now they were not getting any solution to it. So Pillsbury has proposed that what technique they adopt in the engineering system let's let us adopt the same technique in our food safety systems. So they said we adopt a technique called failure mode effect analysis and there from what this HACCP system and this all food safety things came into picture. They Pillsbury applied the same technique of the FMEA and developed a hazard analysis critical control system which was adopted by Codex in the year 1963. Different countries, developing countries, specifically European Union and US has adopted the same HACCP system in their regulations for specifically for the high, to begin with for the high risk product categories and later to the other product categories and now it is part and parcel of their regulation. This is a brief description of how this food safety management system is being developed and how they can go for the certifications. In the year 1959 as I have told you in the previous slide Pillsbury and NASA has developed the HACCP program for the food which was to be used astronauts for their space uh, mission. In the year 1991 NACMCF the, uh, adopted that is the National Advisory Committee for Microbiological Criteria of Food which is part of the codex they adopted this and they develop, uh, published the HACCP principles for food productions. In the year 1997 the codex elementarius commission has added on uh, many requirements and made a revised version HACCP and guidelines for its application which is till date valid and there is no further revision on it. 1998 the BRC global standard came into picture this BRC global standard is a British retail consortium it is a consortium of the retailers associations which are putting the food into the market so they assure that the food needs to comply with the HACCP requirement. In the year 2001 the ISO published an 15161 guidance document it is a guidance document for food and drink industries for implementations of the quality management system. This standard incorporates certain requirements which are being given in the food safety management system. In the year 2002 the Dutch HACCP code came into picture. In the year 2005 the first time the international standard food safety was published that was called as ISO 22000-2005. Just to add that it even the Indian IS standard was adopted by the uh, means uh, was taken from the codex they adopted and developed a standard called IS 1500. Now let us understand to understand uh, HACCP system and the various prerequisite programs which needs to be implemented prior to going to the HACCP, uh, HACCP study and these includes number one the hygiene. So you need to understand what is a food hygiene. When we say hygiene it refers to the term cleanliness that means something which is clean. But now here the question is how clean is clean that means material may be clean for you may not be clean for the other. So we need to have a specific definition of the cleanliness also which is being defined under the prerequisite program. 
Then the other hygiene concept is the personal hygiene. That means you have to keep yourself clean, not just the food clean, not just the tables clean, but also yourself clean. You need to destroy the bacteria so that there is no uh, contamination. The quality of water which you are utilizing to ensure the cleanliness needs to be a portable or needs to does not add on to the microbial growth. There has to be a measure for pest control because apart from the food, apart from the human being in the this thing, there is also the uh, pests which are present in the working environment when a where a food is being manufactured, which is processed, uh, stored. So we need to control that. The other thing is protecting the food from contamination that can come from the human environment, their equipments or the pests. So all these needs to be controlled. Preventing the bacteria from multiplying. That means in case you require there has to be a frequency of cleaning which needs to be defined and there has to be a ways to control the entry of these bacteria or any other uh, elements which can cause a uh, issue to the hygiene. Now what are the benefits of a good food hygiene? It provides a safe product. It leads to the customer satisfaction because food safety leads to a satisfied customer. It provides a good image and increase the business of the organization. It very important thing, it ensures the compliance with the legislation. It increases the shelf life of the product. The product which is very hygienic and clean has a better shelf life than the other. Now there is a cost to poor hygiene. That cost to poor hygiene that means there will be incidence of food poisoning. That means many people may cause, there may be uh, people will be getting illness. There are cases of death also because of the compromised hygiene. There can be a legal action that means there need, can be a penalty. There can be, you may put be put uh, behind the bars. There is a loss of brand image there is decrease in the profitability, the market share get decreased. Now what are the different types of contaminations that can occur? They can be a physical, chemical or a biological contamination. That means a foreign substance present in the food which can cause uh, an ill effect to the food which can cause the ill effect to a person who consumes that food. They are categorized into three, physical, chemical and biological. Now physical is something which can be seen from your naked eyes which, in, uh, which includes any foreign matter like glass, hair, metal piece, stones, wood piece, paper, plastic, anything, anything which you can see, piece of screw, anything which you can see and which can uh, create a problem is called a physical hazard. The other form of the hazard is the chemical hazard. That is primarily dealing with the cleaning chemicals that can come when you are cleaning a floor, when you are cleaning the tabletop, it can come. Then the detergents, they can be oils, the poor maintenance can lead to contamination by oil or grease. They can be contamination due to insecticides, sometimes the pest control measures are being done and insecticides are being sprayed which may lead to a chemical contamination if they are not if the food is not being removed from that place there are certain chemicals which are being used sometimes overuse of the chemicals overuse of additives may also lead to a chemical contamination the chemical contamination can also come from the uh, packaging material which can uh, which can lead to the migrations the third form of the food contaminant is a biological hazards which is which means a bacteria a fungi or a virus that comes from the environment that comes from the food itself because they, that is the place they belong to. So fungi can, there are different uh, conditions in which they can grow. So what are the different conditions which are required by a bacterial hazard? This is one of the very, very important and very, very critical type of a contamination because the food itself contains is a storehouse of the bacteria. If they are not being properly stored, properly man maintained and properly cooked. So, so the bacterial growth can come from food itself. It can come from the water present in the food or from the water which is used for cleaning or from the water which is being added in the recipe to make a particular product. They need a particular combination of time and temperature to their growth. 
that means if the temperature is too high we can expect only the thermophilic but if the temperature is ambient there are n number of bacteria and uh, other uh, microbial growths can occur in the food then they need the time for example every 30 seconds every minute they get double so the bacterial growth is not a normal growth it's a logarithmic growth that means by by the end of the day probably we'll have millions of the bacteria if even if one bacteria is being left out the other important aspect is there are certain spore forming bacteria which are there that means as soon as the temperature increases or it gets too low they develop a cocoon kind of a thing around them and they can sit there have a nice time and the uh, outer shell protects them from the temperature abuses once the temperature is ambient they will come, come back grow multiply and create the food spoilage there then air air is also an important as, uh, element of the bacterial growth air or no air you can say certain microorganisms they can only grow in a aerobic aerobic environment there are certain types of microorganisms which do not need air and they are a big issue in case of the canned products because those products there is a uh, anaerobic environment and they they grow at a very a very conveniently in that kind of an environment now just uh, before we go in detail of about the prerequisite programs the HACC just an overview of the HACCP system which is a preventive based system to prevent the hazards it is a management tool to protect the food against the physical chemical and biological hazards it is a food safety control system by analysis and controlling the above said hazards from raw material procurement to production handling manufacturing distribution and consumptions the HACCP system is designed to minimize the food safety and not a zero risk system it strictly relates to food safety and it does not covers the quality aspects we need to be very clear in understanding now certain acronyms for the prerequisite programs which you find very commonly being used by the uh, food businesses we call it as GMP good manufacturing practices GHP good hygienic practices SCP that is the sanitation control procedures SSOP sanitation standard operating procedures SOP standard operating procedures or it can be the HACCP hazard analysis and critical control points now what does a prerequisite programs refer to as the name itself refers to its prerequisite that means something before starting a program actual program you have to do some pre-planning some preparations so it's a prerequisite programs it's a procedures including GMPs GHPs that address the operational conditions providing the foundation for the HACCP system so these are the basic conditions now we will go to the eight key sanitation conditions which needs to be practiced in any food business which includes safety of the water that means the water which is being there is safe condition and cleanliness of the food contact service surfaces anything which is coming in contact including your hands including your dress including the tables where you are working everything should be clean prevention of cross contamination maintenance of hand washing hand sanitizing and toilet facilities protection from adulterants that means there is no cross contamination in case there is any identified adulterant being used in the system they should not be contaminating the commodities which are not categorized under the adulterants there should be proper labeling storage and use of toxic compounds the employees health conditions and exclusions of from the pests prerequisite programs for the HACCP uh, implementations needs to be verified for their conformance so they are the operational conditions which needs to be followed and which needs to be verified that it meets the desired requirement and then you have to also ensure the effectiveness of these programs by making the records these are the foundations of the HACCP plan now let's quickly go through the seven prerequisite programs that starts with the premises that is your building design and layout the transportation and storage the equipment and machineries personnel who are involved into it sanitation and pest control 
process control and recalls. Premises, the outside property or land, they must be free from debris, refuse and is not close to any source of pollution and roads should be dust free. The building should be sound. That means it should not, it should be maintained in a condition that there is no potential contaminations. The floors, walls, ceilings, everything should be of a material which is smooth, cleanable and durable. That means it should not provide a source for harboring microorganism. There should be a proper ventilations and proper lighting arrangement. The drainage and sewage system, very important for building design that there should not be any backflow of the drainage. Their traps and vents should not lead to any cross connections and contaminations. There should be the pipelines and etc. should be designed in such a way that there is no cross connections between the portable and non-portable water. The raw material and finished storage should not have the rainwater seepage or leakage. The washrooms, lunch rooms, change rooms, they do not lead directly to the food processing uh, areas as it may lead to contamination. The transportation and storages. This is the second important uh, element which talks about the transportation of the packaging material, the carriers which needs to be free from contamination. There should be a very clear uh, sanitation programs for the carriers for a high risk commodities. In the storage, the first in, first out or first expiry, first out mechanism should be followed. Ingredients and packaging materials should be stored in appropriate conditions and in separately and handled in a manner to prevent from damage as well as contamination. They should leave a space of, um, uh, the stacking should be such that there has to be a space between each stacks. It can be 18 inches is just an example. Labels and dates should be clearly mentioned in every storage item. The equipments and utensils should be non-corrosive, non-absorbent, non-toxic and smooth. There should be adequate space for cleaning which should be provided for the equipments. And the very important thing, the equipments which need calibrations needs to be calibrated and the condition should be identified. There has to be a clear preventive maintenance plan. The another important element of the prerequisite program is cleaning and sanitation which we have already talked that it may lead to a bacterial growth. So we need to have an effective program in place. In certain situations we find that it is difficult to dis, uh, take out the equipment. So we use a system called clean in place that means the equipment will be cleaned where it is by defining a clean in place system which can be 5 stage, 3 stage cleaning with water, with uh, detergent, with sanita sanitizer, etc. So they has to be followed, the cleaning and sanitation agents has to be properly identified and should be manufacturing instructions and chemical safety data sheets should be maintained. And effectiveness of the sanitation should be appropriately monitored. The pest control, the pests are another source of contamination which needs to be appropriately controlled and their uh, program has to be in place and pest control program should be only through a licensed contractor because many of the uh, agencies are available which do the pest controls and they should be a system that destroy their hidings, the hidings of the pest and keep them, avoid them so that they do not multiply and there the chemical sprays usage should be appropriate. The personal hygiene, we have talked about it in detail that we need to maintain the hygiene at the personal level. They should be clean, well shaven, hair should be short, workers should maintain their hands clean properly after the toilets, sanitize wherever required, eating, drinking should not be done at the uh, place of working, garbage and if they are handling garbage they should again clean it. Then the process controls includes that at the receiving, inspection, transportation, preparation and manufacturing state, food safety needs to be appropriately maintained and all the techniques are appropriately followed. Non-confirming products should be handled in a separate way. The last one is the recall system. That means we need to have an appropriate traceability in our system 
by adding the code numbers, batch numbers, so that in case of a non-conformance, in case of a complaint, in case of a failure, we can recall our product, right? So this is uh, all uh, for this.